Hello everyone and welcome back to the day 5 of our Hello Python series. I am Mayank Agarwal and in this video we are going to learn in depth about the numeric data type in Python. So let's get started. So in the last video we learned about how numeric data types are actually supported in Python and these three are the types which actually Python uh, allow us to define in a numeric data type. So the first one is an integer, next one is a float and the last one is a complex. So let us learn about them one by one. Integer is actually of course used for storing integer without any fractional part. Float on the other hand are used for storing numbers which are having a fractional part in them. Okay, And complex as we know are used for storing complex number. Though we will not be using a lot of these uh, complex number but uh, because they are majorly used in scientific computing and stuff. But Python does support that and I believe that one should know on that. Because in the further classes I will also be showing you that how you can actually write your own complex number class. So stay, stay tuned and also make sure that you subscribe to the series. So now let us deep dive into the integer. Uh, I would say our in data type. So we saw that how we can define an integer data type in the last class as well, right? So if let's say I'm defining this a is equals to 5, then it becomes a data type of, uh, like I would say, type integer. Now, of course, if you remember, uh, in our maths as well, we have the whole number, the natural number. So overall, everything which you can draw on a number line, right? All the numbers, I would say, negative as well as positive, they are considered as an integer. So we know that it is 1, minus 1. And one thing to note is that both the negative and the positive integers are actually supported by Python. So let us see the same in the code once. Uh, yeah. So lots of cells. Yeah. Let's say if you're defining this a is equals to 5, then if you see this type of a, it's an integer, right? Similarly, we can just make b is equals to minus 5, and the type of b is going to be an integer. Now, of course, there are lots of uh, operations which we can do, but I'm going to make sure that to cover them a lot deeply in the operations class, uh, like down the line. But uh, yeah, this is the majorly the thing which happens in your Python. Uh, next, let's move on to the floating data type. Okay, so float. Python also supports floating point real values. Okay, so real values and floating points. Floats are values specified with a decimal point. So if you remember, like in my math class, that how we used to define, right? 5.03. Okay, so in this way, how exactly I would say that stuff can uh, be stored in Python. Okay, so examples are given in front of you, 3.14, of course, uh, near to the value of pi, 2.7, 1.5, all this can be done. And the next part is Python float also has a precision of 16 digits, just like double data type of C or Java. So precision, what I mean by that is that, let's say if it is two point, then till the next 16 digits, Python float can actually support that. Okay, and that is very analogous to the way it happens in double defined in C, C++ and Java. Okay, so let us see the example for the same as well. So let's say if I'm making C is equals to 5.5, then this becomes a, I would say, type of float. Right? And similarly, if let's say I'm defining uh, D is equals to 3.1 and like this, then this also becomes my float. Okay? So <clears throat> that is overall how the floats are defined and stored in Python. Now, of course, uh, we can do lots of operation on float as well. Uh, the way I see it as integer, you are just storing, I would say, integral values. The way it is used in industry is to make sure that we are able to count the whole number, number of views on a video, number of users on a website, right? They cannot be in a float. But floats are actually used in prices as well as I would say to make sure that you are able to uh, save the revenue as well as the profits because there is a floating point number also takes the value. And along with that, of course, uh, whenever you are doing or using Python for machine learning or any scientific use case, floating plays a lot of role, okay? So the next part uh, which we have to understand in float is that float can also be represented using an exponential value. Okay, so this is required because uh, in many of the use cases you will see that uh, this in this way your numbers are actually defined. Now this is normally easy to understand. Okay, so what happened is that 1 e5, right? So 1 e5, it's just, let me move it, yeah. It is just 1 into 10 to the power 5. Similarly, 1 e minus 3 is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 and we know that okay this is gonna be 1 lakh right and similarly this is gonna be 0 0.001 okay so in a similar way we can define these numbers so just this representation is used a lot so I want to make sure that if you go anywhere tomorrow if you go in a research work or let's say in an industry you are aware aware of this particular representation as well so see this yeah if I see now e and if I see type now type of e it's a float okay in a similar manner in a similar manner if can be 1 e minus 3 and yeah the same thing will happen so f is like this 0 0.001 okay and you can see the type of your f and it's going to be float as well okay so this is your float data type under numeric okay 
the last one is actually your complex data type so complex numbers are written as below like right so they have a imaginary as well as a real part right so x plus y now in python j is specifically used for that okay so you always have to remember that in real life normally in maths or somewhere you will be using i for uh, i would say iota so j actually if you remember this j will be root of minus one right so this is how you can define your i would say float as well so if you want to define a complex number okay let's say if i want to define a complex number c1 i can just do 3 plus 4j and it's gonna define a complex number for me one second yeah type of c one it's complex and of course then we can do all the operations which are possible with complex uh, we are also gonna define our own uh, thing when we will study about oops it's a very good interview question as well so make sure that you like this video and also subscribe to my channel because i will be coming up with more videos on python okay as you know in my hello python series as well as when we move forward then other series on lots of interesting tech topics as well okay so this is your real and imaginary part in this j is your unit imaginary number which is normally uh, like defined as this root of i would say minus one now we can only use letter j and not anything else so that is one thing which you always have to remember okay so you cannot use any other number and it should also be in the suffix and not prefix so what i mean by that is let's say if uh, we have c2 is equals to 5 plus j4 it's going to give an error okay similarly if you try to use c2 is equals to 4 plus 6i it's again going to give an error because it's a syntax error right it doesn't know that what exactly it is in a similar way this j5 it is treating as a variable because if you remember the identifier class we can define variables with this name right so this is a confusion right to keep this thing separate to keep this thing separate you always have to make sure that you are defining like this as well as you are using j always okay so one more thing is that real and imaginary part can be float as well as integer of course that is what how they are supported so i can make it 6.5 as well okay and let's say i can define c4 5 plus 4 or 5.5 plus 4 0.23j and it is fine as well now one more thing which i like you to tell is that you can actually uh, access the imaginary and the real part so for that what you can do is c4 dot if you write real you're going to see the real part okay and in a similar way if you do c4 dot imaginary you're gonna see the imaginary part okay so that is majorly all i would say about the uh, data types numeric data types in i would say or python uh, of course lots of operation can be performed and then which we are going to see but understanding of them is very important because they are going to be the most used kind of a data types, right? So any problem which we are doing, any particular thing which we are doing, that for that, the knowledge of this numeric data type is a lot required. Okay, everyone? So please make sure that you download these notes as well as the codes. Uh, again, uh, I have also attached a prop and the questions is there for you as well, which you can answer as well as the answers are basically hidden there. So please make sure that you answer them first and then check the answers so that overall everything is revised here. Okay? everything about the numeric data type in python everyone in the next video we are going to learn about the bool data type please make sure that you like this video also comment how it's going and please share this video with your friends or anyone who is trying to revise or start their journey in python we'll meet in the next video so make sure that you subscribe the channel so that you don't miss any of the video uploads thanks a lot everyone let's meet in the next class